Hi, I'm Allie Sealander, and I want to tell you about the oldest rock in the United States. This seems like a straightforward enough question, right? Well, the answer is not as easy as you might think. So where do we look for the oldest rock in America? We can rule out Hawaii, which is composed of volcanic rocks that are only a few million years old. Some rocks in Alaska are much older, dated at more than 2 billion years old. That's pretty old, but still not nearly as old as many rocks found in the other 48 states. To start, we need to look at a simplified geologic map. In this case, a basement map, which shows the age of the crystalline rocks of the continental crust. There are some areas in the U.S. where these crystalline rocks, or basement rocks, are already exposed. But what this map does is strip off the younger rocks that have been deposited on top of this basement. This is the kind of map we want to use to locate the oldest rocks. On this map of the 48 conterminous states, the areas of oldest rocks are shown in dark pink. These areas have basement rocks older than 2.5 billion years, a time period called the Archean. Archean rocks can be found in the upper Midwest and Rocky Mountains. This is where we should start our search for the oldest rock in the US. But wait, how do we even know how old a rock really is? The most reliable method takes advantage of the fact that some minerals contain small amounts of the radioactive element uranium, which decays to lead. Uranium is composed of two isotopes, uranium-238 and uranium-235. Both isotopes are radioactive and decay to different isotopes of lead at different known rates. The older the rock or mineral, the more of its uranium will have decayed to form lead. Thus, the ratio of uranium to lead in the rock behaves like a clock, two tiny clocks in fact, one for each isotope of uranium. It takes 4.47 billion years for half of the uranium-238 atoms to decay to lead-206, but only 710 million years for half of the uranium-235 atoms to decay to lead-207. One tiny mineral that is widely used to date crystalline rocks is called zircon. The ratio of uranium to lead in zircon can be used to determine the age of the rock. When a zircon crystallizes inside of a cooling body of a granitic magma, it contains essentially no lead, so the ratio of lead to uranium is zero. As the mineral gets older and uranium decays to lead, each of these ratios increases, with lead-206 over uranium-238 growing more slowly than lead-207 over uranium-235. Take a close look at this diagram. You can see that, the older the rock, the farther up the curve the sample plots. In the ideal case, when a geologist collects a rock, separates out the zircon, and measures the ratios of lead-206 over uranium-238 and lead-207 over uranium-235, and plots these on this diagram, it will plot on this curve and the exact age can be determined. When each isotopic clock gives the same age, the ages are concordant, so the curve is called concordia, and the plot itself is called a concordia diagram. If the two isotopic ratios of lead to uranium don't give the same age, they won't plot on the curve. This tells us that something may have happened that let some lead escape from the zircon. The older the rock, and the more events it experienced over its lifetime, the more likely this lead escape may be to happen. We'll see some examples later. Now, let's get back to our search for the oldest rock in America. Let's take a look at this map again. There are candidates for the oldest rocks in the USA in three states, Wyoming, Minnesota, and Michigan. Let's first study candidates from Wyoming, which are found in some of the state's mountain ranges. On this map, the red areas show where the basement rocks are at the surface. Basement rocks older than 2.5 billion years lie within the thick black boundary that outlines the Wyoming craton. This is what the oldest rocks in Wyoming look like. They formed from magma that crystallized underground, and these igneous rocks were later deformed to varying degrees. 
the rock on the left is more deformed than the rock on the right. Now, let's look at zircon analyses plotted on a Concordia diagram. These plots show a blowup of a portion of the Concordia diagram for the Wyoming candidates, so it is easier to read off of the age where the analyses plot. Most analyses of zircon from these rocks plot on or near the Concordia curve. Some that lie below the curve indicate that some lead was lost. One analysis lying above the curve suggests that a little uranium was lost or lead was gained. We interpret the results for the plot on the left to indicate that the zircon in this rock crystallized 3.452 billion years ago. That's pretty old, but not as old as the Earth, which is 4.5 billion years old. And not quite as old as the oldest known rocks on Earth, which are in northern Canada and are about 4 billion years old. The plot on the right shows two clusters of data, one at around 3.4 billion years ago and another at 3.8 billion years ago. Notice that the age is given with a plus or minus, which describes the uncertainty of the age. The scientists who dated these rocks interpreted their results to indicate that magma that had intruded into the crust approximately 3.4 billion years ago melted an older 3.8 billion year old rock containing zircon. These 3.8 billion year old crystals did not melt or recrystallize, but hung on to their uranium and lead, and therefore remember the age at which they originally crystallized some 3.8 billion years ago. So what is the oldest rock in the Wyoming Craton? Is it the rock we can pick up at the surface that's dated to be around 3.5 billion years old? Or is it the 3.8 billion year old rock that was incorporated into a younger magma, but only its zircon survived to tell the story? Now let's take a look at the Minnesota candidate. The oldest rocks there are exposed along the banks of the Minnesota River. These outcrops are limited to road cuts, quarries, and riverbank exposures. The zircons from the Minnesota River Valley rocks have been through a lot. The Concordia plot shows this complicated history. Many zircon analyses fall below the Concordia curve. Their ages can be recovered if it is assumed that lead loss happened in one episode. In that case, straight lines through the analyses intersect the Concordia at the time the zircons grew. This sample contains three or more age groups at around 3.52, 3.36, and 2.59 billion years ago. Which tells us the age of the rock? The scientists who gathered this data suggested that rocks of two different ages, 3.52 and 3.36 billion years, were mixed together during a deformation event around 2.59 billion years ago, which also caused young rims to grow on the older zircons. Let's continue east to the upper peninsula of Michigan and look at the rocks there. Old rocks in this area are exposed in an area called the Waters Meet Dome. Here are what the old Nysic rocks in the Waters Meet Dome look like. Some are strongly deformed, as on the left, and some are less so, as on the right. As you see from the data plotted on the Concordia diagrams, almost all of the analyzed zircon have lost lead, and the data form an array along straight lines. Zircons on the left plot define a line that intersects Concordia around 3.68 billion years, and on the right, around 3.6 billion years. Both also have clusters of analyses that plot on Concordia at around 3.62 billion years. There are also a few zircons that are even older. These are interpreted as inherited from even older rocks, one as old as 3.8 billion years. Does that date sound familiar? It should. It is the same age as the older group of zircon greens from one of the rocks from Wyoming. So how old is the oldest rock in America? Is it the Michigan Nice that has been dated to be around 3.6 billion years old? Or is it the Wyoming rock that contains 3.8 billion year old zircon crystals? Well, it's complicated. But one thing does remain clear. The oldest rock in America is at least three and a half billion years old. It is interesting that the three occurrences in Wyoming, Minnesota, and Michigan line up, 
suggesting that a belt of very old crust trends across the northern United States. Maybe with more investigation, more candidates will be discovered for the oldest rock in America. Thanks for listening.